Good morning. Good morning. The entrance and the bar. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. Our Mass today is being offered for birthday intentions of Father Joe Palermo. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins and asking God for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, give us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life on earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up with the training and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, be obedient to your human masters with fear and trembling and sincerity of heart as to Christ, not only when being watched as pure in favor, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, willingly serving the Lord and not men, knowing that each will be requited from the Lord for whatever goes whatever good he does, whether he is a slave or free, whether he is a slave or free, masters act in the same way towards them and stop bullying, knowing that both they and you have a master in heaven and that with him there is no partiality. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is faithful in all his words. The Lord is faithful in all of his words. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The Lord is faithful in all of his words. Making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is faithful in all his words. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, 
Then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. And he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. The balanced beam of all the different types of gymnastics, that's the one that I find most uh, amazing and hard to comprehend that anybody would ever in their life try to do that in one time. Because uh, the balance beam is only four inches wide, and uh, the women who do this particular gymnastics move or exercise, they're doing flips and turns blindly on this beam and trusting that they're going to land properly and not really hurt themselves and maybe paralyze themselves for life. Uh, it, it's absolutely amazing to me they, to think about how much they must practice and rehearse over and over and over again those moves in order to be able to do that successfully. And can you imagine what kind of strength, muscular strength they must have in order to contort their bodies in the first place, but then the strength to be able to land on the beam and not fall off the beam and injure themselves. I was thinking about that image as as I'm reading in today's gospel, somebody asked Jesus, Lord, will only a few people be saved in the end? Is it just going to be a few people? Will the majority of the people not make it to heaven? And then Jesus answers, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. I remember asking a couple of scripture uh, professors at the seminary when I worked there, I said, I don't understand this passage. Jesus says to enter into a narrow gate, you have to be strong enough. Is that a mistranslation from the original uh, Hebrew and Greek languages? And they said, no, that's a correct translation. And I said, well, then what does it mean? What does strength have to do with going through a narrow gate? And they both said to me, we'll get back to you on that. And they, and they never have. So I know there's nothing particular tricky about the language itself. So I started praying about this. And what I understood is that if you're going to do something that's narrow, uh, that's going to mean automatically that it's difficult, like the balance beam. And you have to be strong enough for the balance beam, you have to have the, the musculature, the flexibility, all these things that require constant exercise and repetition. To be strong enough means to make sure we've got the spiritual muscle to do everything we need to do according to God's plan in this life. That's how we get through the narrow gate. So the strength comes from a regular exercise routine. And the regular exercise routine for Christians is listening to the Word of God, being fed by the Eucharist by Jesus Himself, praying, and then spending our life in, in service uh, and in help and in charity so that we can use the spiritual gifts that we've been given. And if we do that, we are in effect all, all our life long practicing for the narrow gate or the balanced beam. There's, there's no need for any panic. There's no need for any fear. There's no need to have to worry, well, am I going to be saved in the end? If we are working our spiritual muscle and keeping strong spiritually all our lives, there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of because we're on the right path. 
And uh, we know that God is total love, and God will never for one second stop loving us, no matter how horribly we sin. God's love doesn't change one iota. But our ability to embrace God's offer of love and offer of salvation, that changes depending on what we're doing in our life, uh, on our receptivity to God, on our openness to God, on our faithfulness to God. So it's we who uh, may not be strong enough to enter the narrow gate if we stop working our spiritual muscle. So I think that Jesus is trying to get our attention. We're in the, getting into the final weeks of the year, of the church year, and we're going to hear this message more and more frequently as we get to the end, time, the end of the liturgical year, more and more frequently about the narrow gate, the difficult path, uh, few are chosen, few will succeed, and all that. But we don't have to worry about that if we are practicing and rehearsing all along. I, I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the women who do the balanced beam only have the courage to do it and to be faithful because they're trying this out on a regular, if not daily basis. And certainly before competition, it's on a daily basis. So simply for us, our salvation is one day at a time, one hour at a time, one choice for prayer at a time, one choice for service at a time. It's in that way that we're becoming strong and we'll be able to enter the narrow gate. So God, grant us the gate, the grace to be faithful and strong one day at a time. We bring our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. For the church, may she always be a beacon of light and truth to the world in spreading the gospel to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders throughout the world, may God guide them in enacting laws that uphold the eternal law of truth given in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are facing adversity in their lives, may Jesus calm their fears and bring them consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent deaconate in our archdiocese. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today we pray the ninth and final day of the Respect Life Novena of the U.S. Bishops. Today's intention is may all Catholics help to build a culture that cherishes every person as a precious gift from God. Amen to that. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We pray three Hail Marys, one each, for greater faith, hope, and love in the culture of life. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Father, please hear our prayers also for peace in the Middle East and in Ukraine. And we pray for all fallen away Catholics to return home to the faith. 
We pray that the gospel values may guide our electorate in their voting next Tuesday. And for all our personal needs and intentions, we pray to the Lord. 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 Father, please hear the prayers we have offered, which we make in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all the saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friday is All Saints Day, a holy day of obligation, besides the two morning masses tomorrow at uh, 6.30 and 8 a.m. We'll have a vigil mass for All Saints Day at 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. On Friday, All Saints Day, we'll have our two usual morning masses at 6.30 and at 8. At 9 o'clock, we have a mass for the school children who will come dressed as saints. It's quite a scene. And then right after that, at 10 o'clock, we will have a Eucharistic procession. Uh, we're getting the canopy today from the Archdiocese for the procession, which will go out the door to the parking lot to Avenue B. Avenue B to Fence Place, turn right and go in front of the school to Avenue A, then take a left on Avenue A to Hector, and down Hector back to Avenue B, and then back into the church. So that will start about 10 o'clock if you uh, wish to come to that. We'll begin about 10 o'clock and should go to about 10.30 or a little bit past that. It should be a wonderful experience for our children, our, their families, and our community. Uh, so we look forward to that. There's also a Mass that we are sponsoring, an outdoor Mass, at 3 o'clock on Friday, All Saints Day, at Metairie Cemetery. Uh, the Arch Archbishop Amen will be the celebrant for that Mass, and I'll be kind of celebrating along with our deacon who will be assisting. It's also a wonderful Mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the 